Good morning, Year 6. Mrs Green here with your final Friday reading lesson this week. So that's another week completed, so well done. But before we start your reading lesson, we're just going to do our shout out. Well done, Simran from 6R. You have impressed us today by your ability to retrieve evidence in the text to support your points. Two class dojos for aspiration for you, Simran, so well done. Okay, right, moving on to our starter task today. So, you need to think back to yesterday and the part with Alex and Wolf when they're on the parachute. And what I want you to do is think about this question. Why does Alex think Wolf won't jump? Can you write down anything that you can remember from the text yesterday that indicates that Wolf won't jump or that Alex thinks he won't jump? So pause the video now and write down as many things as you can remember. Right, okay, let's see. First of all, to his surprise, the man was completely quiet and moving. So Alex was surprised that Wolf literally was quiet and unmoving and just sat in the doorway. The look on his face was another thing that indicated that Wolf was scared, was terrified and it wouldn't jump. And finally, Wolf's partner was moving to the door, but Wolf was not. But still, Wolf did not look up. So well done if you remembered those three things from yesterday. Okay, our key vocabulary for today. So, rigid, when you're unable to bend or be forced out of shape, not flexible. Summon, when you issue a call or command. And stow, when you store something away, you lock something away for safekeeping or you pack something away. Okay, so we're gonna have a go at saying it all together now. So here we go. Rigid, 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 rigid. Summon. Summon, summon, stow, 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 stow. Right, year six, I do hope I'm not the only one saying this on my own. Okay, and let's have a look at some tricky words today. So in the chapter that we're reading at the moment, 40 and equipment comes up, and they are also words that are on our year six list. Common mistake that lots of year sixes make, with 40 is they write the number four, F-O-U-R-T-I-Y when spelling 40. And equipment, the, the letter P is often omitted as well. Okay, let's have a look at this word completely. What is the root word, the original word for completely? Okay, of course, it is complete. Can you think of any more words that share the same root word complete? Of course you can, incomplete. Okay, and finally, photograph. What's the spelling rule for photograph? We have covered it in year six this year. Okay, so we know the PH um, is for the F sound. Right, well done if you remembered that. Okay, so today we are going to be carrying on with making inferences. Yesterday you were making inferences based on pictures and video clips, and today we're going to be going back to inferring from a text. But we're going to be moving on a little bit more because we're because we're going to be answering two or three mark questions. And one way to do that is to use something called PEE. -E. So the P stands for point, which is where you give your opinion and give a very basic answer to the question. The second E is the evidence where you actually provide an example from the text. This is where you can quote. And the final E, the third E, is when you explain your point, when you elaborate and give more detail. So I'm going to have a go at modelling an example of using PEE for a question that will come up in a moment. In the meantime, let's listen to part of the text. The other man jumped. Suddenly Alex was aware that only he and Wolf were left. Move it! The assistant pilot shouted above the roar of the engines. Wolf picked himself up. His eyes briefly met Alex's and in that moment Alex knew. Wolf was a popular leader. He was tough and he was fast completing a 40 kilometre hike as if it was just a stroll in the park. But he had a weak spot. Somehow he'd allowed this parachute jump to get to him and he was too scared to move. It was hard to believe, but there he was, frozen in the doorway, his arms rigid, staring out. Alex glanced back. The assistant pilot was looking the other way. He hadn't seen what was happening and when he did... Okay, so the question is, how has the impression of Wolf changed? Now let's remind ourselves, the word impression refers to an opinion or an idea. So how has our idea or opinion of Wolf changed from what we knew before? So let's first of all start with the P. 
Okay, so the my P point is going to be, he was portrayed as being the perfect SAS cadet, a real tough guy, and then now he's being portrayed as being a bit of a scaredy cat. What's my evidence for that though? Well, in the text it says Wolf is tough and fast, but now we had a weak spot, meaning that he could potentially be binned. Now I need to further explain and elaborate on that point, so thus suggesting that he wasn't always a hard man. Okay, let's have a go at another one, and this time I'd like you guys to have a go as well. If Wolf failed to make the jump, it would be the end of his training and maybe even the end of his career. Even hesitating would be bad enough. He'd be binned. Alex thought for a moment. Wolf hadn't moved. Alex could see his shoulders rising and falling as he tried to summon up the courage to go. Ten seconds had passed, maybe more. The assistant pilot was leaning down, stowing away a piece of equipment. Alex stood up. Wolf, he said. Wolf didn't even hear him. But let's pause the video now, guys, and have a go at answering this question using the PEE structure. Wolf is determined to make that jump. Yes, no, or maybe. What do you think? And your opinion is fine as long as you can support it using evidence from the text. Okay, let's see. Right, well, my answer, I'm going with maybe, and I'm going to explain why. The evidence to me shows that he was trying, it says, he tried to summon up the courage. So he is determined to do something. However, 10 seconds had passed. And I'm going to explain now why that gives me a maybe answer. Thus suggesting that Wolf is trying to achieve the jump, but it is unlikely to happen in the time frame. So the word determined is that you set yourself a challenge and you complete it. So I think although Wolf wants to do it, he's not actually going to. Okay, another practice question for you guys, because this is your turn. Alex took one last look at the assistant pilot and kicked with all his strength. His foot slammed into Wolf's backside. He'd put all his strength behind it. Wolf was caught by surprise, his hands coming free as he plunged into the swirling night air. The assistant pilot turned round and saw Alex. What are you doing? he shouted. Just stretching my legs. Alex shouted back. The plane curved in the air and began the journey home. Okay, your question. Look at the paragraphs beginning, if Wolf failed. Okay, what impression do you get of Alex? And what is your opinion of Alex, just from that part that I just read? Thinking about your PEE -E structure. Okay, so you may have put as your point that he's a decent guy. You might have put he's a thoughtful guy. You might have put Alex doesn't want to see his teammates or will fail. And the evidence might be in the text that says Alex thought for a moment. Right, he's obviously thinking about what he could do. After realising that if Wolf failed to make the jump, he'd be binned. So Alex knew that if Wolf didn't jump, he would not, he would not pass. And the fact that Alex is thinking about it shows me that he doesn't sit well with him. And then Alex kicked Wolf out of the plane. So the fact that Alex kicked him off the plane is showing that he wanted to do something to help Wolf. So if we elaborate now and explain, first suggesting that he was kind and didn't want to see Wolf fail despite how he'd been treated. Now notice in the explaining part, I've used the word kind, which supports decent, but it is not the same word. Okay, I'm now going to read a few pages of Storm Baker. So just sit back and listen. Mrs. Jones was waiting for him when he walked into the hangar. She was sitting at a table wearing a grey silk jacket and trousers with a black handkerchief flowing out of her top pocket. For a moment she didn't recognise him. Alex was dressed in a flying suit. His hair was damp from the rain. His face was pinched with tiredness and he seemed to have grown older very fast. None of the men had arrived back yet. A truck had been seen to collect them from a field about three kilometres away. Alex, she said. Alex looked at, her, looked at her but said nothing. It was my decision to stop you jumping, she said. I hope you're not disappointed. I just thought it was too much of a risk. Please sit down. Alex sat down opposite her. I have something that might cheer you up, she went on. Bought you some toys. I'm too old for toys, Alex said. Not these toys. She signalled a man and a man appeared, walking out of the shadows, carrying a tray of equipment which he set down on the table. The man was enormously fat. When he sat down, the metal chair disappeared beneath the spread of his buttocks and Alex was surprised it could even take his weight. He was bald with a black moustache and several chins, each one melting into the next and finally into his neck and shoulders. He wore a pinstripe suit which must have used enough material to make a tent. 
Smithers, he said, nodding at Alex. Very nice to meet you, old chap. What have you got for him? Mrs. Jones demanded. I'm afraid we haven't had a great deal of time, Mrs. J. Smithers replied. The challenge was to think what a 14-year-old might carry with him and adapt it. He picked the first object off the tray, a yo-yo. It was slightly larger than normal, made of black plastic. Let's start with this, Smithers said. Alex shook his head. He couldn't believe any of this. Don't tell me, he explained. It's some sort of secret weapon. Not exactly. I was told you weren't to have weapons. You're too young. So it's not a hand grenade. Pull the string and run like hell. Certainly not. It's a yo-yo. Smithers pulled out the string, holding it between a podgy finger and thumb. However, the string is a special sort of nylon, very advanced. There are 30 metres of it and it can lift weights of up to 100 kilograms. The actual yo-yo is motorised and clips onto your belt. Very useful for climbing. Amazing. Alex was unimpressed. And then there it is. Smithers produced a small tube. Alex read the side. Zit clean for healthier skin. Nothing personal, Smithers went on apologetically, but we thought it was something a boy of your age might use, and it is rather remarkable. He opened the tube and squeezed some of the cream onto his finger, completely harmless when you touch it, but bring it into contact with metal and it's quite another story. He wiped his finger, smearing the cream onto the surface of the table. For a moment, nothing happened. Then a wisp of acrid smoke twisted up into the air. The metal sizzled and a jagged hole appeared. It'll do that to just about any metal surface, Smithers explained. Very useful if you need to break through a lock. He took out a handkerchief and wiped his finger clean. Anything else? Mrs. Jones asked. Oh yes, Mrs. J. You could say this is uh, the La Piece de la Resistance. He picked up a brightly coloured box that Alex recognised at once as a Nintendo Game Boy Colour. What teenager would be complete without one of these, he asked. This one comes with four games, and the beauty of it is each game turns a computer into something quite different. He showed Alex the first game. If you insert Nemesis, the computer becomes a fax slash photocopier, which gives you direct contact with us and vice versa. A second game, Exocet, turns the computer into an X-ray device. It has an audio function too. The headphones are useful for eavesdropping. It's not as powerful as it's not as powerful as I'd like, but we're working on it. Speed Wars is a bug finder. I suggest you use it the moment you're shown to your room. And finally, Bomber Boy. Do I get to play that one? Alex asked. You can play all four of them. But as the name I suggest, this is actually a smoke bomb. You leave the game cartridge somewhere in a room and press start three times on the console and it will go off. Useful camouflage if you need to escape in a hurry. Thank you, Smithers, Mrs. Jones said. My pleasure, Mrs. J. Smithers stood up, his legs straining to take the weight. I'll hope to see you again, Alex. I've never had to equip a boy before. I'm sure I'll be able to think of a whole host of quite delightful ideas. He waddled off and disappeared through a door, which clanged shut behind him. Mrs. Jones turned to Alex. You leave tomorrow for Port Talon, she said. You'll be going under the name of Felix Lester. She handed him a folder. We've sent the real Felix Lester on holiday in Scotland. You'll find everything you need to know about him in here. I'll read it in bed. Good. Suddenly she was serious and Alex found himself wondering if she was herself a mother. If so, she could well have a son his age. She took out a black and white photograph and laid it on the table. He showed a man in a white t-shirt and jeans. He was in his late twenties with blonde close cropped hair, a smooth face, the body of a dancer. The photograph was slightly blurred. It had been taken from a distance as if it was a hidden camera. I want you to look at this, she said. I'm looking. His name is Yasan Gregovich. He was born in Russia, but he now works for many countries. Iraq has employed him, also Serbia, Libya and China. What does he do? Alex asked, though looking at the cold face with his blank hooded eyes, he could almost guess. He's a contract killer, Alex. We believe he killed Ian Ryder. There was a long pause. Alex stared at the photograph, trying to print it on his mind. This photograph was taken six months ago in Cuba. It may have been a coincidence, but Herod Sale was there at the same time. The two of them might have met, and there is something else. She paused. Alex Riley used a code in the last message he sent. A single letter Y. Y for Yasan. He must have seen Yasan somewhere in Port Talon. He wanted us to know. Why are you telling me this now? Alex asked. Because if you see him, if Yasan is anywhere in his Sale Enterprises, I want you to contact us at once. And then... We'll pull you out. If Yasan finds you, you're working for us. He'll kill you too. Alex smiled. I'm too young to interest him, he said. No, Mrs. Jones took the photograph back. Just remember, Alex Ryder, you're never too young to die. 
Alex stood up. You'll leave tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, Mrs. Jones said. Be careful, Alex. And good luck. Alex walked across the hangar, his footsteps echoing. Behind him, Mrs. Jones unwrapped a peppermint and slipped it into her mouth. Her breath always smelt faintly of mint. As head of special operations, how many men had she sent to their deaths? Ian Ryder and maybe dozens more. Perhaps it was easy for her if her breath was sweet. There was a movement ahead of him, and he saw that the parachutists had got back from their jump. They were walking towards him out of the darkness, with Wolf and the other men from K unit right at the front. Alex tried to step around them, but he found Wolf blocking his way. You're leaving, Wolf said. Somehow he must have heard that Alex's training was over. Yes. There was a long pause. What happened on the plane? He began. Forget it, Wolf, Alex said. Nothing happened. You jumped and I didn't. That's all. Wolf held out a hand. I want you to know. I was wrong about you. I'm sorry I gave you such a hard time, but you're all right, you know, and maybe, maybe one day it'll be good to work with you. You never know, Alex said. They shook. Good luck, cub. Goodbye, Wolf. Alex walked out into the night. Okay, and it's now time for me to share your chili challenges. So on the next few slides, you're going to see different questions for one, two and three chili, which require you to use inference, but also to, to structure your answers using PEE. So let's take a look. Okay, for one chili, what was Alex thinking about seeing the picture of Yasan? And how do you know? Now, we're just going to rewind a little bit before you start, remembering that when we use, when we infer, we use clues, we look for clues in the text, clues that might not be literal, but that we have to read between the lines. But we also can use prior knowledge and previous experience, and we can also put ourselves in the character's shoes. So use that to help you answer this question. Okay, too chilly. The SAS have a tough recruitment, recruitment program. So that means that when they're trying to get new recruits in for training, it takes a lot for, pe for people to pass. Do you agree with that? Yes, no, or maybe. And explain using evidence from the text. And your three chili. Alex wondered if Mrs. Jones could be a mother. What do you think? What in the text might suggest this? It might suggest that she is a mother or not a mother because you can have whatever opinion you want as long as you can support it. So pause the video now and have a go at your chilies, guys. Okay, on to the check part. Let's have a look and see what you've got. So, for one chili, you might have put that Alex would be feeling angry as Yasan killed his uncle. Okay, and that would also be that you'd be able to use your own um, prior knowledge of that. He would be thoughtful too about how to get revenge. They might even be thoughtful about how he missed him. It says in the text he was thoughtful and stared at the photograph. So what might he have been thinking? And that he tried to imprint it on his mind. To imprint it on his mind suggests that he did not want to forget that man's face. Okay, you're too chilly. A tough recruitment programme for the SAS? I think so, yes it is. Because you have to pass every test. And it says in the text that if Wolf didn't jump, he would be binned. So despite the fact that Wolf was brilliant at everything else, if he wouldn't have made that jump, he would not have had a career in the SAS, which suggests that it is 100% pass rate and very tough. Okay, three chili. Did you think that Mrs. Jones could be a mother? Yes or no? Right, well, if you went with yes, it could be because she considers Alex's feelings and explains her decisions. It says in the text, I hope you're not disappointed. I just thought... I just thought there was too much risk. I have something that might cheer you up. This suggests that she knows how to deal with children, younger people. You may, on the other hand, have gone with no and said she can't be a mother because, she, because of her career and how she is head of the special operations division, where she has to make decisions where she sends people to their death. Right, well done for completing your chili challenges today. As always, please send them into Year 6 by taking a photograph and emailing them in. And that is the end of your Friday reading lesson. So Year 6, hope you have a lovely, lovely weekend.